Welcome to a Date with Darkness podcast, where I will be discussing the impact of hurtful and abusive relationships and how to overcome them so that you can move through your pain and get to the kind of healthy relationships you want, need, and deserve. I'm Dr. Natalie Jones. I'm a licensed psychotherapist based in California. While I hope that you find this podcast educational and informational, please note it should not be substituted for treatment with a licensed mental health professional. Also, due to the nature of the podcast, some of the information presented on the show can be sensitive to some of my listeners. So please note that listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome back. Um, and it's good to be back. It's been a couple of weeks since my last episode dropped and I've missed um, doing podcasting. So I'm excited to be back. Uh, this is also a very special episode. This is my 100th episode that is released. It's certainly not my 100th episode recorded, but it's the 100th released episode. So I'm super excited about that. Um, you know, this is the week of Thanksgiving. So I'm actually recording this on Thanksgiving Eve. And I thought what better way to spend Thanksgiving Eve than to record a podcast for my listeners, who, for me, I am so very thankful for um, the opportunity to get and sit and talk with you and, you know, share information with you and, you know, hear how the information that I've released to you over the years has impacted you, has been helpful, has changed your life, or maybe you've referred somebody else to the show and it's been helpful for them. Um, so I'm very happy and very pleased um, that this show is, you know, trucking right along. So this is an exciting time. And, you know, my hope and wish is that it continues to grow and get better and better with time. Um, and that, you know, of course, um, you know, that it continues to have the impact on listeners that it does. And so um, before we get into the episode, of course, the housekeeping, uh, the group membership, um, coaching is coming up, individual and group membership. I know that I've talked about that, uh, but it is still in the works and it is something I am still working on. Um, and so I do hope to have that release for you very shortly. And I'm very excited about that. Um, that is a labor of love um, that is being produced um, as we speak. So if you want to be in the know and sign up for that, when that is released, um, go to the show notes. The link is there uh, for you to be in the know, first in the know when that does drop. Um, the other thing is, of course, the Facebook group, always free. Um, if you want to engage with other like-minded listeners or other folks um, that are healing from abusive relationships, um, definitely, again, check the show notes. The link is there as well. And as always, if you have any questions for me, a date with darkness at gmail.com. You can always go to my website, um, also um, drnataliejones.com for more information about abuse, abusive relationship, narcissism, et cetera, and download the free ebook to be in the know on the newsletter as well. And so I hope that uh, that information that you, you can find a lot of helpful information there as well as um, through previous episodes of the podcast. Um, there's been a, a wealth of information given there. And I am just happy to serve you and give you that information. Okay, so without further ado, I thought and also, oh, one other last thing that I want to mention is that if you like the show, you like what you hear, please do help others continue to find the show and help the show grow by leaving a, uh, a, a good rating or a good review. And um, on your uh, whatever podcast listener you listen to on iTunes, um, if it's a podcast addict like I have, 
Um, so whatever listener, whatever uh, platform you, you use to listen to this show, if you leave a positive review um, in a rating, that would be so helpful. Um, and I would be so grateful and thankful for that. Okay, so without further ado, I want to definitely dive into the meat and potatoes of this 100th episode. And I, of course, I always have my notes here. I've got some equipment that I've updated so I don't have to do the old fashioned, um, you know, handwritten notes type of thing. But I don't know, I'm just kind of like, you know, nothing beats this. So I'm really, you know, I really like doing this. But, you know, because it's holiday season, I thought what better way um, to, you know, start up our 100th episode than by giving gratitude first, of course, and then talking about ways to protect your energy and your relationship energy during the holidays. The holidays for many people is a very, very stressful time. I would say, you know, anytime between October until, you know, early January, it's very stressful here in the U.S. People running around, buying decorations, making traveling plans, uh, preparing for family time, buying gifts. Um, it's very commercialized too. So there is that pressure, you know, especially within the U.S. to buy, buy, buy in order to show your love and appreciation and adoration for other folks. Um, so there is that sort of material component, which for many is also stressful. Spending money becomes a source of stress for others, but also uh, not, in, not in just the financial capacity per se, but, you know, sometimes money is often equated with worth. And I don't, I don't agree with that concept. I don't think the more you spend or the more you have, the more worthy you are. Um, but, you know, for, um, you know, if, if that's a very materialistic view, um, but for many, um, that is um, something that has been ad adapted through the concept of gift giving or spending money um, or, you know, showing love is through material things, um, which again is very heavily emphasized. If you turn on TV, if you look at magazines, if you're just walking downtown by stores and things like that, it's bye, 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 to be merry and show love and be happy by buying gifts. Um, but okay, enough of that spiel. I'll get back into that a little bit later. So the first way um, or first path uh, that you can take to protect your energy during the holidays is being very clear about boundaries that you have. And um, I should, I should, Put a specifier on that is that the clarity needs to come to yourself, um, with yourself. You need to be clear with yourself about what your boundaries are. Um, so you may not necessarily be able to communicate boundaries uh, to people that don't really respect your boundaries because they're invested in you not having any. But the person that you should always definitely be very clear about is yourself and act accordingly. So that means, um, what that means is being clear about, you know, uh, maybe again, as I was talking about a little bit ago, finances in terms of what's your budget, how much are you going to spend, or if whether or not you're going to spend anything at all. Um, and I'll just share a little, little story here uh, with you just to give you a bit of context. I was one of those people many years ago that used to uh, go out shopping and perseverating over gifts. I would put a lot of thought into it, thought, time, and money, and then, you know, presentation on making it look pretty by wrapping papers and bows and things like that, things that I would, I would actually wrap myself. Um, and so it was, in my mind, it was a labor of love, but it was very labor intensive. And then, you know, I put all of this into it and, and I, I'd give it to the persons that I'm giving it to and, oh, they don't like it. They want to take it back and exchange it for something else or, you know, they, they re-gift it to somebody else. And then I'd feel like, oh, you know, I'd feel very slighted 
in the relationship, like, oh, they really didn't appreciate me, or they really didn't appreciate the time that I put into that. In all actuality, people are entitled to not like their gifts. Um, but if you're putting so much into it, you're probably doing too much. And it's not necessarily about the gift um, that you are giving. It's more about how do I, how, how is my worth measured in this person's eyes? Am I worthy? Um, you know, am I worthy of their love, of their appreciation, or, or of a relationship with them? Do they approve of me? Um, do they want to be connected to me? Um, and so that's what that, that kind of stuff is really about. So be, being clear to have boundaries around that, that, you know, uh, my worth is not determined by gifts. My worth is not determined by finances. So I'm only going to do whatever I can do to feel good. And I'm not going to mismatch the two. I'm not going to say that one equals the other when in all actuality, it does not. Also boundaries could include being very specific with your time. Uh, so if you have, you know, you maybe have a chaotic family or, you know, you have and not necessarily even a chaotic family, but let's just say you might have a get together where there's going to be a ton of people over there, or there's going to be people asking questions, saying things and, you know, being curious in conversations, but you've just worked, you know, a 32 hour week. And so your energy is already at a negative zero. You're kind of tired and you'd rather spend time alone to recharge, to rest and reboot. Be clear about that, you know, be clear about that with yourself. And you may also, um, you know, just sort of prepare them by saying, hey, you know, I've only got an hour or two that I can spend. I can't stay all day. So just so you know, I'm only going to be here from this time to this time. And that's all that I'm able to do this time around. And keep it moving, you know, very clear, succinct, very respectful. You prepared them, you know, their reaction is not your problem or their feelings about your ability to stay, again, isn't necessarily your issue. Um, you know, uh, so there is that. Um, but if you're, if you're kind of, you have to preserve your energy, um, you know, especially if you have to go back to work this week or something like that, or you have other things going on, or you have multiple parties to go to, multiple events to attend to. So that is something to think about. Also, another boundary, um, one of the things that I'm thinking of is when things become very chaotic or things become intrusive or impolite or they're crossing the line. Um, some of the things that I can think of are people making comments about relationships, people making comments about weight and, oh, do you really think you should uh, be putting all that food on your plate because you're already big enough? you know, I don't think you should be eating anymore. So people sort of policing uh, how you eat and, you know, making intrusive comments and things like that about your weight, about your relationship, about your job, or whatever the case may be, just sort of taking those jabs or making comments or statements or asking questions that are very inappropriate. Um, having uh, making being clear and inserting boundaries there. Um, one that's not appropriate, um, you know, for you to ask me that, or I don't appreciate that comment. And I, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly capable of managing what's on my plate. I don't need for you to tell me what to do. There is also the option of getting up to leave if you choose to, if you feel that it's becoming too intrusive or it's, it's caused you to feel um, attacked or it's caused you to not even feel like you want to engage or be bothered with uh, the festivities anymore. Um, a boundary that you can implement is taking care of yourself, taking care of your mental health, packing it up and getting out of there if you so choose. So remember, um, you do have choices here. Um, the choices are yours. Um, and to be very clear about how you wanna manage that. And it's good to start thinking about that before going to these events and things like that. Um, and if you have a therapist, talking with your therapist about 
um, the best way to, to manage um, holiday festivities and to implement your boundaries. One of the things that, you know, I um, try with my clients, in addition to talking about the boundaries, is also role playing. Uh, because that can be very helpful for them in terms of, you know, acting it out in the moment and seeing how it then translates over to real time. And there's something to be said for practicing and uh, getting in the habit of saying no or getting in the habit of saying that doesn't work for me or saying that that's not appropriate or just you know, whatever the case may be, um, it becomes easier to do once you've practiced it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense there. Uh, number two is being prepared to act on consequences when your boundaries are violated. Um, so going back to the first point where I, you know, I say, you know, uh, what we we're just talking about is someone has disrespected you in some way, they've disrespected your time or just in some other capacity, if they've crossed that line and you've said, hey, that's not appropriate or hey, that's not okay, or don't ask me that, or I'm not able to engage in that way. And it's continued to be intrusive. Don't continue to do what you've already been doing because it's not working and they feel for whatever reason that other person feels as though that there's a limit and they've determined what the limit is and that they're going to push you there until they're satisfied. That doesn't work. Um, that's not healthy. It, it doesn't work for me. And hopefully it doesn't work for you. Um, you know, so be prepared to enact on consequences. If you do it again, I'm going to leave. Or, you know, if you do this again, then I, we're done, you know, whatever the case may be. So be prepared to implement consequences. Um, other, other scenarios, another scenario that comes to mind is if you're in a relationship with a, uh, you know, a narcissist or a toxic person, one of the hallmarks, especially around the holidays, um, you know, of a person with narcissistic traits or abusive traits is that they like to steal the thunder uh, during the holidays. And so that means that they want all of the attention, even if it's negative attention, put on to uh, them for the holidays. So this may manifest in a number of different ways. It can manifest in them making a scene. It can manifest in them refusing to show up. It can manifest in them uh, coming over and engaging, uh, giving a gift and then getting angry and taking the gift back and storming out and then you know, making a scene. Um, it can manifest in their behavior being wildly inappropriate. Uh, so for example, getting uh, drunk or stoned at a party and uh, making inappropriate comments or having behavior that's just totally out there. It's going to be uh, narcissistic people don't typically don't respect boundaries, um, but that does not mean that you cannot stand firm in what you're willing to implement. If you're going to act this way, you need to leave my home. If you are going to act this way, I cannot be here with you in this setting. I, you know, and so just being prepared to implement those consequences uh, for you, those boundaries there that I'm not going to stand by and support this behavior. I'm not going to continue to give you this energy, albeit negative. Um, that's just what I'm not prepared to do this holiday. I don't have the bandwidth. And even if I did, it's just not healthy to do that. Um, and so being able to stand firm and implement that, um, and you may not necessarily have to say it, it could be just something that you just act on and do like, I'm sorry, um, this person is, their behavior is out of control, their behavior is extremely toxic. So at this point, they're beyond the point of reason. So I'm not going to try to reason with a person um, that isn't rational. I'm just going to take care of myself and I'm going to then um, act accordingly. So hopefully that there makes sense for you. Okay. All right. So number three 
And, and, and um, this is, I should mention that these aren't in any random, these aren't in any specific order, so they're not in order of importance. Uh, so I just want you to be aware of that. But anyhow, being that being said, number three is being aware of how you feel and honoring your mental health. This is especially important. Um, a lot of times during the holiday seasons, we, we kind of force ourselves to do things we really don't want to do. We don't have the energy. Again, you know, a lot of us working class professionals, we go to work, we, we, we do life, we have kids, we have all this other stuff. And so doing something extra is already expanding on the bandwidth anyway. This year, uh, we have the added layer of COVID-19 uh, and all the variants that come with COVID. COVID. So being around people, um, you know, increases, um, you know, according to CDC, uh, increases the likelihood of possibly that exposure to COVID. Um, and that may not make people comfortable whether you're vaccinated or not. Um, so there is that added layer of like, okay, I've been relatively good about isolating myself or about social distancing, but now I'm being invited to a party where I know that there's not going to be social distancing in place, or I'm being invited to a situation where people aren't necessarily vaccinated or no one's asked about that. So the, the amount of risk is, has increased substantially. So there's that. There's, um, you know, there may be alcohol, there may be other things, or it may be an environment that you just, you know, these are people that you necessarily don't want to be around. Um, and that could be, you know, your job, if your job is having a Christmas party, you know, or things like that. So just being aware of your mental health. If you're having a lot of anxiety, you know, you're kind of like ruminating and you can't stop thinking about it. And it just doesn't sit right on your heart honor that, honor how you're feeling and do what you can to take care of yourself. The other um, emotion that you may be having is depression. Um, there's a lot of people that have experienced loss of loved ones, um, have experienced maybe breakups. So there's some ambiguous loss. Um, there may be people that have experienced family estrangement, um, so there's another type of loss um, in that those kind of losses, or even if you just have generalized major depression um, or things like that, it is good and beneficial to honor your, your feelings and your symptoms of, of depression um, and taking that time to honor those feelings. Um, what I will say with depression though, one of the hallmark signs of depression is isolation. And isolation is not necessarily good for people. I would like to think of it this way. If your isolation is spanning over a number of days and hours, and you're not necessarily um, feeling recharged or replenished in energy, then that means more than likely um, that the isolation or the withdrawal that you're um, implementing is not something that's healthy. Um, so again, that, that would be the way to uh, determine whether or not it's actually something healthy that you're doing. If your energy is being recharged, it's being replenished, then okay. Um, it's, it's, um, it's healthy. If it's not, and you're just kind of still in the, you know, you, you're not really motivated to do anything. You don't really feel good about anything. It's a challenge for you to get up. It's a challenge for you to shower. It's a challenge for you to work or do things like that. Then that's a sign that, you know, this is more indicative of uh, depression, depressive symptom severity. And you should probably talk with your therapist and your psychiatrist or your general practitioner about that um, to help manage those symptoms. Okay, but either way, you know, it's important to recognize how you feel when the holidays come and some people kind of go through depression anyway, I will point that out. Um, anyway, when the holidays come, there is such a thing as holiday blues, that when the holidays come, 
you know, you just, you start to feel a lot more bluer than usual um, and that it's just a challenging time. So honoring that, uh, being mindful of that and taking steps to um, do what you need to kind of deal with those symptoms, okay? Um, four, refusing to engage in toxic behaviors. So this kind of goes back to, you know, when you have toxic people in your life that want to create conflict, that want to create duress, um, that want you to kind of uh, jump through hoops um, for them, buying stuff and doing stuff for them to show them that you are worthy of crumbs of a relationship. Um, you know, I encourage you to, re to really think about that and challenge yourself not to engage in conflict, not to engage with trying to um, rationalize or spar with a person that is very irrational, um, trying not to, you know, clean up their mess. You know, if a person that is extremely toxic or abusive has, you know, basically destroyed the holiday um, or attempted to destroy the holiday, you know, let's not, um, let's not engage in that with them anymore. Um, it's time for you to take a step back, evaluate the relationship for what it is and act accordingly, but don't lose yourself in that. Otherwise, that is energy that you spend going down that rabbit hole of negative energy with them. So being sure to do what you need to do in order to take care of yourself. And it might be that you might need to get out of a particular situation, um, a living situation, or maybe you need to go stay with a friend or someone else for a few days if you can, if this person has become um, a tyrant or a bully or doesn't feel safe in your home. Um, so being sure to, um, you know, get out of there. And, and this isn't to say that you're causing anything or that you're doing anything. It's just saying that don't do things um, that you will regret and get yourself caught up in. Um, it's not uncommon at all for emergency services to be on high alert during this time because there is a lot of violence um, that tends to escalate and happen around the holiday season. Okay, so number five, again, honoring your finances. If you have a budget, stick to it. Remember, your finances are not tied to your worth. Your gifts are not tied to your worth. Um, so just thinking about um, the holidays, if you want to do something for the holidays, think of the holidays as creating an experience and not as like a material sort of gift giving, spending money. So if you can create a fun filled experience where it's something that you will remember as opposed to buying gifts or things like that. That could be another way to sort of, you know, create fun around the holidays um, without everything being tied to money or material things. Um, also, with respect to finances, um, not feeling like you're obligated. If you feel like you're obligated to get someone something, you should probably look at that relationship. If it's like, you know, kids or whatever, like you want to, you know, you want to show kids that Santa Claus exists or you want to you want to kind of do that sort of thing, that's different. But if you have an adult person that you're in a relationship with that you feel this sense of like obligation, like I have to get you something when you don't want to, that is something to be looked at. Um, and that means different things for different people, um, but it is something that you should evaluate with your relationship. And also, again, if the gift has to be extravagant or if it has to be over the top, um, you know, that's something to be looked at as well. Um, six, speaking up for yourself. Um, I can't emphasize this enough, People need to speak up for themselves when things aren't um, meshing well with their mental health, when the environment that they're in in the holidays doesn't suit them, when a person, uh, when you need help during the holidays. There's a lot of people that get stressed out 
because they are busy preparing the home for the holidays. And so you need help. You might need help doing decorations. You might need help preparing all of the foods and things like that. So making sure to speak up for yourself. Maybe you need to take a step back and you need to take some time uh, to rest or put your feet up or, you know, I don't know, do something else. But being sure to speak up for yourself, recognizing that, hey, energetically, I'm not okay right now. Um, I'm not doing well. This interaction right now, right here, isn't serving me. So being sure to say what you need to say and speak up for yourself. Seven, rest. Um, rest, rest, rest. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. A lot of um, the folks that I work with, a lot of colleagues, a lot of peers that I have, are workaholics their life is consumed by work which means that you know they will work straight through a holiday and not take any time to enjoy uh, themselves not to take any time to you know do something fun and you know they will continue to work um, and spend long hours at work um, just consume work is um, you know in order to be productive, one thinks that, you know, a lot of people think in order for me to be productive, I always have to be working. That is not true. Part, a big part of being productive is taking rest, honoring your mental health and taking rest. If you don't do it now, it will at some point catch up will, with you and your body and your mind will force you to take a break whether you want to or not. And in my mind, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. And, you know, life is very short. So enjoy the moments, but be sure to rest. And rest could look different. It could be laying at home, staying in bed for a little bit. It could be reading a book that you've, you've wanted to read. It could be watching football and things like that. It could be going out, riding around and looking at the holiday lights. It could be, you know, whatever it is that's going to, you know, make you feel well rested. But please do take a step back from work. Um, and I can't emphasize that enough. Take some time to rest and enjoy yourself and have fun too. Um, spend time where you will enjoy yourself. So what that means is if you have people that are inviting you over into situations and you don't necessarily want to do it, honor that. Do spend your time where you will enjoy it, where your energy will be replenished. You know you're going to have a good time. It's going to be you know, not stressful. You're not going to be worried about this or that. Um, you can come as you are and it's going to be okay. Spend that time there. And if your time is spent like at home, if your time is spent traveling, doing that, wherever it's going to be, you know, you need to decide, you know, where's, where am I going to really enjoy myself? What kind of holiday do I really want to have for myself? What's going to make me feel really good? So just thinking about what you enjoy and what you want to do that's going to, you know, again, create those special memories uh, for yourself. And lastly, what I'd like to mention is allowing people to show up for you. Now, and there's a lot of people, like I said before, there's a lot of people that have, that listen to this that have experienced loss in many different ways. Um, and sometimes when we've experienced loss again, and we have the holiday blues, we want to retreat and we want to, you know, just remove ourselves from society until this blows over because it's too painful of a holiday uh, to deal with. It's too painful of a time of year to deal with. What I would say to that is, you know, if we've, you know, some, most of us have experienced loss in some form of another, but there's, if you're still here on earth, there's opportunities for you to celebrate life and allow others to step in and love you. If you have people that are kind of willing to step in, show you love, love up on you, um, spend time and, you know, you know that you're going to have a good time with them and you know that their feelings are genuine. 
make space in your heart, make space in your life to allow that love to enter. We all need it. Um, and part of, you know, being wounded by loss sometimes, which we can't see, is we inadvertently push it away. You know, there's life to be celebrated, um, even when there's loss. So remember to allow people in that have those great intentions um, and allow yourself to be loved on and cared for and taken care of in spite of your loss, okay? All right, so I hope that this episode, my 100th episode, has been good for you. And again, I'm excited to be back here in the chair with you, talking with you. And until next time, guys, take care of yourselves and be well. Thank you.